Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. U.S. Navy divers are highly experienced underwater specialists who perform critical roles in various naval missions. The U.S. Navy has been at the forefront of creating contemporary diving and underwater operations, driven by national defense needs and the demand for specialized undersea capabilities. Navy divers have been around since the mid-19th century, when they were primarily responsible for ship salvage, repair, construction, and military activities. U.S. Navy divers have been a diving leader since the mid-1800s. Early divers operated in shallow water, carrying out salvage, construction, and military missions. By the early 1900s, they started experimenting with stage decompression and diving deeper, reaching 274 feet of water by 1915. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Navy divers were swiftly dispatched to rescue stranded sailors and recover ammunition. Their contributions were vital to the massive salvage effort that followed the attack. Divers in the U.S. Navy receive intensive training, including courses on diving administration and the treatment of diving-related illnesses, such as hypothermia and decompression sickness. Training also addresses the Mark 20 and Mark 21 diving rigs and Kirby Morgan helmets. Divers interact with ships using voice communication systems via umbilical, which is the main means of communication, or line pole signals as a backup. While air supply is unlimited for surface supply diving, thanks to the umbilical, an emergency gas supply, EGS, is required for deeper dives. U.S. Navy divers are also called CBs, taken from the abbreviation for construction battalions. Navy diving consists of numerous forms of diving, including underwater ship husbandry, underwater construction, salvage, demolition diving, saturation, research, hyperbaric medicine, and diver training. CBs conduct underwater construction and salvage with pneumatic jackhammers connected to surface air compressors via umbilical connections. These tools are specifically designed for underwater use, featuring watertight casings and pressure compensating features. They use specific equipment for underwater welding, such as an arc welding with waterproof electrodes, surface-powered welding machines, unique underwater cables and grounding, visibility-enhancing underwater lights, and surface-based safety monitoring. Both procedures necessitate surface supply diving equipment and close cooperation between divers and topside assistants. 
Seabees, or underwater construction teams, UCTs, also carry out specialized demolition activities beneath the surface, frequently dismantling damaged infrastructure, such as pier pilings and underwater obstructions. They use precisely calculated explosive charges, usually placed at important structural places to achieve clean breaks and minimal collateral damage. Explosives must be placed and timed precisely, considering factors such as water pressure, current, and structural integrity. These operations help the Navy clear waterways, reduce navigation hazards, and prepare locations for future building. Seabees <laughs> also inspect underwater structures. Underwater construction teams use specialized imaging and diagnostic instruments to inspect deep water mooring systems and ocean facilities thoroughly. They conduct comprehensive inspections of chains, anchors, and buoy systems, documenting wear trends and structural integrity. UCTs use underwater cutting and welding equipment for repairs, as well as measurement systems to ensure specifications and alignments. They can install new anchors, replace broken components, and perform preventive maintenance on undersea infrastructure. Teams coordinate complex activities using surface supply diving devices and underwater communication technology. Their competence includes installing instrumentation, repairing undersea cables, maintaining pipeline systems, and assuring the operational availability of important naval facilities through frequent inspections. Another specialty of UCTs is the salvage of vessels and aircraft. Aircraft occasionally crash into the sea and ships sink. In such cases, CBs are used to salvage complete structures or sensitive equipment. They may also be required to destroy structures that are too expensive to salvage to prevent sensitive materials from falling into the wrong hands. Another example is when, on November 20th, 2023, the United States Navy P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft overshot the runway at Marine Corps Air Station Kanahohe Bay in Hawaii. The aircraft, assigned to Patrol Squadron 4, VP-4 Skinny Dragons, became partially buried in Kanahohe Bay after landing during heavy weather. All nine crew members were safely evacuated without significant injuries. The plane remained trapped in shallow water, necessitating a complex recovery operation involving numerous agencies to avoid environmental harm and reclaim the $140 million aircraft. Because of the aircraft's proximity to coral reefs, 
The occurrence necessitated meticulous planning, raising concerns about environmental effects and the difficulty of the recovery operation. Navy divers from the Mobile Diving and Salvage Unit, MDSU-1, conducted thorough underwater surveys of the P-8A and the adjacent reef area. The evaluation established the aircraft's structural integrity and created a safe evacuation plan with little projected environmental damage. Divers use salvage equipment at several spots to ensure even weight distribution during extraction. The operation needed precise coordination among diving crews, engineers, and environmental specialists. The P-8A Poseidon was successfully lifted onto a barge on December 2nd, 2023, following nearly two weeks of meticulous planning and execution. Divers use specialized equipment. The Mark 20 Mod Zero full face mask and Mark 21 Mod 1 diving helmet devices are primarily used by the United States military for surface supply diving operations. These systems connect to the surface air supply via umbilical assemblies, which provide breathing gas, communication, and pneumo tachometer measurements. The Mark 21 uses the Kirby Morgan Superlight 17B NS helmet and has an emergency gas system and an environmental control unit. For specific operations, forces use Kirby Morgan 37 and 47 helmets. The diver's augmented visual display DAVD device improves modern diving operations by providing heads-up display functionality within dive helmets. Scuba is just like you would do recreationally um, on a vacation or, or something. You're carrying your air on your back. You're limited to only the air that you have on your back and the skills that you bring with you. Um, surf supply diving, you have a tank on your back just in case, um, but you have an unlimited air supply uh, coming to you from the surface. The Diver Augmented Vision Display prototype was created at the Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Division. It integrates smoothly with regular Kirby Morgan dive helmets, utilizing 3D printed components. This dynamic device improves diver operations by projecting real-time visual data, including sector sonar information, allowing topside teams to relay visual information directly to submerged divers. Another innovative diving system is the Mark 29 Mixed Gas Rebreather. The Mark 29 Mixed Gas Rebreather is a modern diving device that allows for deeper dives using helium-based breathing mixes. This semi-closed circuit technology dramatically minimizes helium usage by recycling exhaled gas, which is especially crucial considering helium scarcity and high cost. The method eliminates CO2 using a scrubber canister while maintaining accurate oxygen levels. The system includes automatic gas addition, precise mixture management, and emergency backup systems. Music 
Diving operations have come a long way from the simple and dangerous systems used at Pearl Harbor. The U.S. military has replaced normal scuba systems with surface-supplied systems, allowing longer and deeper dives. Technological advances have introduced systems such as rebreathers and augmented reality to make diving much safer and more efficient. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.